So here we have Grace Ross on the show today. She has run for the governor of Massachusetts. She's run at large for city council. This time, this year, she is running for District 4 city councilor. Grace, thanks for being on the show. Sure. Uh, why should people in District 4 vote for you? Um, well, I think the key issue is because the economy is continuing to get worse, and I think District 4 uh, not only struggles with the highest foreclosure rate, which is an issue I've been working on uh, for two years in depth, but also that it's going to keep getting worse, and District 4 is going to see most of the city cuts if we don't have a really strong advocate and, and somebody like me who's used to working with people you know, on the ground, door by door, street by street, to get involved in, in fighting for what they need. Um, what, qual- what qualifications do you have to be a city councilor? Well, as I said, I think the key thing is that I've done policy work for years, and I've done it in a way that was about opening up the process to as many people as possible. And surely District 4, which has one of the lowest turnouts sometimes in elections, is the place that the most people need to get involved to make a real change and to bring a voice to city council that's going to um, really alter the dynamic so that District 4 is a place where people feel like they can get engaged, draw together the brilliant and really diverse resources of the district to fight for getting people back in their homes, getting uh, good jobs, decent paying jobs, uh, union jobs, green jobs, and um, fighting for all the things that are impacted, for instance, by them having cut the public health department and the services that uh, really uh, make a difference for people on the ground. Brendan, do you have any I did have one question. Um, if there was only one issue that you could deal with over the next two years, assuming if you if you were to get elected, there was just one issue that you you, you could focus on uh, to improve, you know, the District Four. I, I think no matter who you asked, they would come up with a different set of issues that you know are relevant to District Four. I think a lot of them are sometimes just sig- stigmas that we've been able to shake, but some of them are, are real concerns and real issues. If just one that you could focus on and see through to uh, start to finish a- as District Four's counselor. What would that be? Well, I think that the problem with the question is, of course, it's not one issue. They're intertangled with each other. I mean, I think it's basic to look at the issue of foreclosure because right now um, Worcester is... I think got I think Scott Heyman said we're at a thousand uh, foreclosures in the last year. Um, those usually represent two households uh, on average, and in a city like this, it's probably close to three households. Uh, the uh, former owner and two tenant households, and right now the banks are just emptying people out. So it is you can walk parts of the district, and there's some parts that feel empty, like you're in a ghost town. But in some ways, the more devastating parts are the places where there are households still, you know, thriving and holding on and next to them is a building that's been emptied out and uh, or that's in the process of somebody's like trying to hold on there who's willing to pay their rent they're willing to stay their kids are in the local school but now they can't get access to their their water or their electricity and if people know their rights and if we stand together we really could turn um, the economy around in in district four on the housing issue and it's going to be critical there's there are streets you can walk down where the buildings are boarded up and we just can't go there Um, I want to ask a question that Gabe Rollins has asked, which is, what would you do to keep um, young people in Worcester? Because Worcester's a college town. Like all of Massachusetts, you know, Worcester's really depopulated in the 25 to 35 uh, Mm -hmm. age range. I mean, is this an issue for you? And if so, what would you do? Um, I think it's a huge issue for the city in general, um, getting, having things set up in a way that people stay here. And staying in Worcester is what's built our local businesses over the years and what's built our local energy and economy and I think a lot of the diversity of the city. So yes, I think it's a critical issue. I mean, I think that people are looking for opportunities. You know, I think people are looking for uh, an economy that's doing well enough that you can get a decent job, you can can find a place to live. And I think that District 4 is a perfect example of this. We have tons of thriving, um, or at least attempting to thrive, small businesses, and I was part of bringing Worcester Local First to the city as a way of finding a vehicle for small businesses to network together, to build each other's strength, to bring visibility uh, to our locally owned businesses so that folks don't just go spend their money on chains that, you know, the money goes right out of the city. So I think that that kind of thing, bringing green jobs, I think a lot of uh, young folks more than 
gray-haired folks get it about uh, a clean environment, a healthy environment, doing something about global warming. And you know, we're working right now on a huge initiative through the Green Jobs Coalition to bring a weatherization revolving loan fund uh, to the city as a whole, but we would start focused in a lot of the areas of District 4 and a lot of the, you know, the neighborhoods that are struggling the most. And those are jobs, and those are, are good paying jobs, and that is going to turn a lot of people's economic situation around if they're not paying the ever-increasing utility bills and not struggling with trying to, you know, sort of balance that against the shrinking dollars a lot of us have for food and housing. So, uh, in the interest of disclosure, I should say that Grace is a friend of mine for some years now, uh, that I built Grace Ross's website, and I, I'm not working on this city council campaign, but worked on the last city council campaign. Um, and in fact, I'm not a big fan of Barbara Haller, and I think that despite the fact, and who is the incumbent in your district, and uh, you know, this very hardworking uh, city councilor, I think probably um, not a very effective city councilor for the amount of work that she puts into it. Um, that said, I think that Barbara, you know, Barbara, you know, Maine South is not falling apart. Maine South, I don't, I don't think of as being particularly neglected by the city, even though it's sort of the poor, the poor district, you know, the slummy district. Um, you know, like Barbara knows how to, you know, do constituent services. I think I, that's my impression. You know, Barbara knows how to get things done. Barbara knows how to, you know, make sure that the city manager doesn't neglect the things that need to, that need to happen in that district. And so, um, I think that some people would say, well, why should we, why should we trade somebody who is, you know, represented the district for some years now and seems to have done a reasonable job uh, for somebody who, you know, is coming, so somebody who's not served in city government at this point? Um, well, you know, it's interesting. I think there'd be, of course, some argument about how effective she's been. I think there's no question she tries to be everywhere and she tries to connect with folks and I think she's, you know, a nice lady. Um, I think the really key, let's take the pools issue as an example, right? Uh, there's been a big fight about money um, to rebuild our neighborhood pools. There was literally hundreds of people have come out to hearings to say we want rebuilt our neighborhood size pool state-of-the-art yes zero entry all of the things that everybody would want from a pool that you're spending new money to build um, but they've asked for neighborhood size pools and the biggest turnout actually was the one for crystal uh, across from from Clark and we had over 150 people at that hearing. The voices have been absolutely clear. We want our neighborhood pools. We don't want spray parks. We, we don't even necessarily care about bells and whistles. We want something basic that's affordable. Um, so what happened? What happened was that because of some internal fights inside the city council and the city administration, they voted to spend $10.5 which is way more than any of us who've been working with people in the neighborhood asked for. Uh, which most people would acknowledge, you know, we, we don't want to spend all the money there. You know, we'd like to spend some money on schools, for instance, or housing, like some really key things. What happens, they decide to build one mega pool uh, for $2.5 million. Uh, right now they're talking about Crompton Park. And that means District 4 goes from three pools that were in District 4 plus a fourth one, uh, Beaverbrook, which served District 4, to one mega pool that people are going to have a harder time getting to because of all the cuts in, in public transportation the neighborhood sized pools for served not only a gathering point for people in the community but also were accessible so that if you've got two kids of wildly different ages in tow you can go down to your neighborhood pool uh, as the economy continues to struggle people are going to need those kinds of free safe uh, good activities for their kids to be involved in and instead of being able to do that, what do they get? They get one mega pool, which Barbara voted for. So after all of the sort of rhetoric about caring about the neighborhoods and the pools, they made a choice that was wildly expensive, doesn't serve the need. And that pool, the amount of money they're spending on it, they could rebuild three pools. And we would have money left over for the future to begin to draw in private matching funds and so, actually build more pools. So we've got a minute, about a minute left in this part of the interview. So how does this connect to... The issue here is that it's not enough to say I have a, a avenue to the city manager and I'm going to get him to show up. You actually have to listen to the people in the district. You have to represent the people in the district. And you have to be willing to provide solutions that work at the neighborhood level, not some big fancy pool that you can cut a ribbon on.